Psalm 16. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go back to Psalm 16, verse um, verse 6. Who wants to help us? If you if you if you have any transition there, you can just bring it up. This is the this is the word for the year. And I just want to remind uh some remind us again because Starting from next um, next month, I'm going to be preaching about this. So I just want to make sure, prepare your heart before I go into the main topic. Psalm 16, verse 6, or verse 5, sorry. Let me share my screen. So here, uh, let's do the full chapter because uh, Psalm 16 verse 5. Lord, Lord, you give me stability and prosperity and you make my future secure. So that's the word that God gave us at the beginning of this, this year. I just want you to remember that. So we spent the first part of the year talking about authority that you have in Christ. We've spoken about being co-creator with God. We started the year with, um, start talking about the story of Joseph, uh, being, being beautiful story of Joseph in, in, on Sunday. And all that is just talking about, you know, um, the grace of God in the life of Joseph, it looks about the work ethics of Joseph, it talks about the dedication of Joseph, talk about, talks about empathy that Joseph had, talks about Joseph's uh, leadership style and so on and so forth, right? But to start into the second part of the year, I just want to just prepare your mind because I'm going to be talking more about, a lot more about how you, how we can walk in the prosperity of God. You know? So I just, please, when, it may, when I start teaching about it, but I don't know when I'm going to, I'm going to do it on this, When's the service on Sunday yet? I don't know yet. Please just prepare your heart to, to, be, to open to it, right? Because this scripture here is the word that God has given us for the year, right? Which means, Lord, you give me stability and prosperity. You make my future secure. So it doesn't matter what it is you're going through. God's desire for you to be stable and to prosper. And also for you to not to have to worry about what will your future look like. You know, this is the desire of God. Uh, for each one of us, right? So I wanted to just bear that in mind. Uh, so you might have seen on our videos on Sundays, we put the year of stability and prosperity. The main test came from Psalm 16, uh, verse five. Okay. Is there any comments on this before I go on? Which uh, Bible version is that? This is the New English Translation. All right. Praise God. Okay. Um, let us go into, so please write that down in your note. Um, I'm going to start July talking about prospering God's way. Why it is God there for you to prosper. I will share practical things that God shared with me on how uh, we can prosper. Now, please, for the record, Prosperity is not just about money. I think I talk about it a lot, in, at least on Sundays. I talk about prosperity is not just about money. Prosperity is, money is part of it. But prosperity is, the, is, is a wholesome life. Prosperity really is shalom, right? It's shalom. And in the book of Genesis chapter one, when the Bible says, and God looked at everything he created and it was good, right? I explained before that that word good is also the word prosperous. Which is everything that God has God created, God declared them to, 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 to prosper, right? To be prosperous. Right? So prosperity is not meant to be an alien subject. It's not the subject that the church is meant to be like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. You know, so let nobody deceive you. If you don't, if you don't, uh, if you don't walk in that prosperity that God desires for us, 
the level of influence we're going to have in this world will be limited. All right. So um, we're going to be tearing apart some myth, some thought process that uh, all of us may have believed about our money or prosperity that kind of us sort of like affecting our ability to 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 grab hold of it, a grab hold of it. An example is money does not grow on trees. You know, when you start talking about money does not grow on trees, you're basically saying, oh man, there's scarcity in the world, right? God doesn't want you to have scarcity mindset. But I'm going to talk about that uh, in the future uh, because I don't want to get ahead of myself. All right. So tonight I want to talk about the, we started talking about, we know we've been looking at the how to co-create with God. So tonight I'm going to be looking at the power of your name. So I've got a te- I've got a um uh the the note here that I've got on my screen. So I want to talk about the power of your name. So let's just do a bit of uh, an exercise tonight. I hope I'm hoping I can do I can do breakout session because I've been wanting to do the breakout session for a while. I hope I can do that tonight. But let's see how God takes us. So the last time we spoke about Eve, Adam naming Eve, I would say that Adam saw um, when God declared a judgment uh, over Satan and uh, God caused the ground uh, for Adam's sake. And God said to the woman, it's going to be difficult now. You know, you know childbearing is going to be difficult. Um, there was a scripture in Genesis 3, verse 15, where God said to Satan that the seed of the woman, that is the offspring of the woman, will give birth to a child. So the, the offspring of the woman will crush the head of Satan. Essentially, God said to uh, Satan, God made a prophetic declaration, a statement that was going to come to pass, that there's going to be a seed or a child born through the lineage of the woman that will eventually crush the head of Satan. And uh, in the last week, we spoke about the fact that in the middle of all of that judgment, after God has pronounced that, that in Genesis 3, verse 20, Adam then named Eve. And Adam called his wife Eve because he said she, she is going to be the mother of every living thing. Right. And the name Eve means life giver. Right. So, so I want to just make sure that we allow that to set to first that when God calls something by name, God impacts, usually impacts destiny when he calls something by name. An example of God says the sun should provide light during the day, you know, and that continues to function to that day. Adam picked that authority, that, that trait of God, you know, the authority to be able to name things from God and right there, right there, even in the middle of the fall, Adam used the authority and said, my wife's name shall no longer be woman, she shall be Eve, which means she's a life giver. So in light of what God has done uh, in the life, in light of what God has promised rather, uh, even though there is a deeper cool on the ground, there's a challenge on the ground, in light of what God has done, I choose to call my wife life giver, which means I have tapped into, I have tapped by faith into um into what god had uh, what god has said what god had declared and by virtue of my tapping into that by faith i can now choose to call my wife uh, eve which is life giver which means i am agreeing with god and that approach is absolutely important because what that approach means is that when god declares a thing over your life that which God declares over your life may not necessarily be your experience. But by agreeing with God with your mouth and saying the same thing that God has said or declared about you, you fast track bringing that thing to reality in your life. An example we know very well is the story of Abraham and, and Sarah. Abraham was, Abraham's name was Abraham, and um, Genesis chapter 17, uh, Abraham's name was Abraham, and, and um, Sarah's name was Sarah, uh, Sarai, you know, and each of these names you know, meant different things. For example, Abraham means exalted father, but God said, no, you're no longer, no, no longer going to be called exalted father, you're going to be called the father of a multitude. Uh, and that was in Genesis chapter 17, verse 5. And we see that God changed the name of Abraham to Abraham uh, because 
God called those things that be known as though they were. God declared unto something what he wants something to be, and that thing becomes what God has said that thing should be. So by the vocalized words of God, when God calls you a name, when God declares you a name, that name carries an impactation of what your name will mean, of what your destiny should be, of what you are expected to do. All right. So this is the name that God called Abraham. God said, your name is not God, going to be called Abraham, but Abraham, you know, and you are going to be the father of a multitude. At the time that God said this, Abraham didn't have a child. Abraham was exalted father. He was prosperous. He had money. He was rich in cattle gold. He had all this stuff, but he didn't have a child. You know, but God declared that his name is going to be, at least he didn't have a child of covenant. You know, the child that God promised him. You know, God said, your name is going to be called Abraham. And it's amazing that uh, when we study the scripture, that a year after God made this declaration, God told Abraham to change, God changed his name from Abraham to Abraham. A year after Abraham gave birth to a child named Isaac. And Isaac means laughter. Isaac means laughter. So the life of Isaac is meant to be a life of laughter, a life of joy. Okay. So Sarai, on the other hand, why was queen or a name means princely, right? Princely, right? But the name that God gave us, Sarah, means queen of princes or the mother of princes. Why? Because by virtue of that name, God was saying to Sarah, the children that you are going to have will end up becoming uh, kingly, they will have kingly, they will, have, they will become kings in the future. They will come, they will have kingly uh, lineage, lineage as it were. So essentially, uh, Sarah, who had a child, God is saying to you, not only will you have children, but your children will be princes and princesses, they will be of, the, of royalty. And it's in the natural, it's inconceivable when God says that. That's why when, when God said this, Sarah was like, <laughs> how is this possible? When, you know, I mean, we'll pass the time of chair bearing, you know, like she was, she was, she was ridiculing this, that thought process in our heart. And God said, why did Sarah laugh? And God said, by this time next year, you're going to have a child, right? And lo and behold, Sarah had a child. A year after Sarah had a child. All right. So when God calls you a name, it's important to know that that name designates a kind of your new identity, the way you should see yourself. And it's absolutely important. So tonight I'll be, I'll be looking at the name that God called, the one single name, one important name that God has called every believer. The moment you became born again, there's a name that God calls you. We're going to look into what that name means tonight. And in light of what has happened to Abraham and Sarah, I want us to take a clue from that and say, Abraham became father of many nations after he began to call himself what God called him. And the same thing for Sarah. And therefore, because we are Abraham's children by faith, we could expect to do the same thing, that when God declares us to be this name that he calls us now, that the onus is on us to then for agree with God by calling ourselves the name that God has called us. Now, please remember, God called you the name even though that may not be your experience. That may not be your experience in the physical, but that is the name that God has called you. As far as God is concerned, that is already done. That is the name you are. That is the reality that is profound in the realm of the spirit. So we see in the name of Jesus Christ, for example, is a name Jesus means, in the, in the Hebrew language means Yeshua saves. Yeshua saves, that's the full meaning of Jesus. And when the angel came to uh, Mary in the book of Matthew chapter one, the angel said, you shall call the name Jesus. Why? Because he will save the people from their sins. So Jesus' name, the meaning of that name, the purpose for that name is to save people from sins. And that's what eventually he did, right? Uh, by going to the cross to die in our stead. So when your name is called, it's important to understand that name must have a purpose, a destiny, something that is impacted into you. Okay, so 
I don't know if anybody can who would like to volunteer for me. I got a, a simple thing that is a simple experiment I want to carry out. Who wants to volunteer? You just want to ask a couple of questions, uh, you know, so make it a bit more interactive. And then we, we did that from that. Who would like to volunteer? You're in a quiet place, you can talk, just want to ask a question. I'll volunteer. Wow, talks, that's good. So talks, I got some, I got a question for you. Yeah. When when someone mentions the name, um, I'm not talking about the name that, that God is giving you, which we're going to talk about in a moment. I'm talking about your natural name now. When somebody mentions your name, what uh -huh. picture, what picture does it evoke in your mind? What what, what happens to you when it just calls your name? Um, what when the matter? How does it make you feel? It's it's a great feeling hearing my name, and I feel I see myself. So they say, talks, and I see the entirety of who I am. You see the entirety of who you are. Okay. Now, how did you learn to know your name? How did you learn to know your name? My parents calling me that when, from when I was a baby. Obviously, when you were a little baby. You will not know the exact time that you got to know that my name is this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but 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 you have your own children, right? And you will when you call one X, right? You mm -hmm. will you will <laughs> you will look at the child and say and call and say that name. I, I don't know I, how how do you try to impact? How do you impact the name to that child? How do you as a parent? How do you how do you think you you have enabled the child to know his name? by calling him calling him his name all the time telling people that's what his name is okay so so the, the child is um crawling let's say this is crawling now it's in the crawling stage crawling around and then you call mm -hmm. you call you know jack or jones or whatever and then mm -hmm. uh, and then you say it open maybe I don't know how the child gets to look at, but the, the child had this, the child has hears it so much that after a while, the child begins to say, That's anytime I hear this name, it seems like mommy is calling me. I don't know whether that's the case. I'm just trying to figure it out myself, right? Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. And also <laughs> talking directly to the child and saying, you know, singing songs to the baby, using his name, talking directly to him, calling him out. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah calling him out, singing to the mm. child, reiterating the name over and over and over. Mm. And when the child mm -hmm. is when the child is learning A, B, C, D, and you're saying A for apple, B for ball, C for cat, mm. you know, the, the, there are pictures associating the names yeah. to, yeah? Now, but when it comes to the child, you might, you possibly might open the baby picture or whatever and say, you know, Jack, 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 or I don't know how, how it's done. You know, I can't remember how I did mine, but you get a point. There, there's, a, there's a repetition, there's a repetition over time that the child then gets to know, oh, when mommy says Jack, is she's talking, she's talking about me. Right? Okay. Yeah. Now, question. What do you think is the value of the birth certificate that then bears the child's name? It's, um, I guess, a legal document or evidence that this is that child's name. Okay. So it's a legal document that says this is a child's name, regardless of how the child may feel that maybe I'm not Jack anymore. There's a mm -hmm. document that says this is the name that you were given at birth. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a legal document that says this is your name. Um, there's a repetition over and over based on the father saying to you or the mother saying to you, your name is Stokes, your name is Stokes, your name is Stokes, you know, all right. And then when you're about to go to school, they ask you to fill a form. You take that legal document, you say, this is the name, you write it out, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. Now, that is a process in the natural. I said somebody else has, has a, a different idea. I said, largely how you get to know, my name is Kenny, my name is Davis, my name is Stokes, my name is Jane, you know, it's a process of repetition until you get to know mm -hmm. that name. And there's also a process of a legal tender or okay, a legal document that sort of like back that up, you know. And, mm -hmm. and as you peruse that document, as you see that document, as you read that document yourself, 
you you come to associate. Okay, this is my thing. Yeah. Is that is that okay? Is that is that is that correct so far? Yes, I agree. Okay. Question. At what point do you start? Did you start to defend that name? So when somebody says that name, starts to call you a different name from the name that you know is your name. At what point in your journey did you then begin to defend? No, that's not my name. Or maybe somebody calls you the yeah. name in a different way. You start to know well, what's wrong with this guy. How come you don't? How come you don't know how to pronounce my name? Whatever. At what point in time do you, do you start to defend that? From childhood, the minute you know the name is yours and, and you can speak, <laughs> once you um, once you understand that it's your name, and I think that's when, even if the child is unable to speak properly, yeah, they wouldn't respond to a different name. Um, for example, Josh, our, our youngest is Josh, mm. and um, but he's not Joshua. We just named him Josh because we liked Josh, <laughs> even mm. though he's derived from Joshua. Mm. But from when he was a toddler, if people called him Joshua, he would say it's just Josh. Mm. So from from toddlerhood. Hmm. That is impressive. So, so, so I got a question for you. All right. If I want to start from that point, because I didn't want to start from there before, but I'm going to start from there. So I start to defend my name in the natural after I've become aware and I've accepted it to be my name. Yeah. I could not possibly defend it if I'm not aware. I could not possibly defend it if I don't believe my name. I could not possibly defend it if I don't care about it. Right, but the moment, I, the moment I believe it's my name, the moment I believe that is my name, mm -hmm. I'm very careful about how you pronounce that name. I'm very careful about how you. I don't want you to call me, um, you know, um, Jones. When I my name is Davis, I was saying sorry. Who are you talking to? You know, that's not my name, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got it. That's interesting. That's interesting. Okay. Now I want to move in John chapter one. John chapter one, verse twelve to thirteen. John chapter one, verse twelve. Thank you very much for helping to bring that in. I hope that's helped everybody. John chapter one, verse twelve to thirteen. John chapter one, verse twelve to thirteen. I've got it at the bottom here, but somebody, yeah. John chapter one, verse twelve to thirteen. What do we have there? Who also have what to read? Who is helping us to read? Or should I call name? Jane, can you read that? Or who's, who's, who's helping us? Sorry, my phone was playing up. You sure? Sure. So what is John chapter 1 verse 12 saying? Um, I'm just reading from the one on the screen. Yes. But as many has received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, okay. even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Thank you. So, as many as received him, he gave them the power to become what? Who? The sons of God or the daughters of God or the children of God. For everyone that believed on the name of Jesus, God says they are now children of God. These people that are now children of God, Pastor Tim says, they are not people that are born of blood, of the will of the flesh, of the will of man, but of God. Essentially saying, when you become, when you believe on the name of the Son of God, when you believe in the name of Jesus, when you receive him as your Lord and Savior, God declares you to be a child of God. But who did he declare to be a child of God? It is that person who is born of God. But this person that is born of God is not born of 
the will of the flesh. It's not born of the will of man. This is not a physical human being. The person who is born of God, that is called a child of God, is not just your physical body. It's not, this person did not come from uh, your DNA or your lineage, did not come from my father, my father is from this one so place, so I'm from that place. This, your, your identity change, your, your family tree change, as it were, the very day you became, you, you, you gave your life to Jesus, this very day you received him as Lord and Savior. Your, your family line totally changed. And that's the reason why when you become born again, or when you receive Christ as Lord and Savior, you've got to rewire your mind to say, I'm not a new creation. I don't belong in the lineage where I came from. I may have come from it, this lineage in the physical, but the day I became born again, something happened to me and my lineage changed, my family tree changed. Now I am of God. I am born of God. I am born of God. So whereas my surname might be in the natural, my surname at the moment is obviously David's Bamik Boy. My surname is Bamik Boy because that's my father's name, right? In the realm of the spirit, my surname is God. So I am Davis of God. You are Nike of God. Why? Because you now have a new name. You now you have a new family name called God. That is your family name. It's, your family name now is G O D. Right. Okay. And so, therefore, you are a child of God. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, the Bible says, And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Almighty God. Okay. God says, I will be a father to you. You will be his son. You will be his daughter. That's what he said. Now, 1 John 3, 3, 1 to 2 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called, we should be called, we should be called, we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows, knows us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. God called us the sons of God, and now we are the sons of God. All right, so let's say son is, you know, you know, son is like, it's not, it's gender neutral here, right? So sons of God. So from this, what we see, we see that the father has bestowed upon us such love that now we are called the sons of God or the children of God, or each one of you is called a child of God. And verse 2 says, beloved, now you are a child, you are a child of God. Now you are a child of God. Okay. So going back to the analogy that we, we play with toads, there are three things we, we, we uncovered in the analogy we play with toads. Number one, a child gets to know his name through repetition from the parents or from people around him or a child gets to know of that name through some sort of document that is codified, that dictate, that explain, or that's written down the, the name. It might be a passport, it might be a birth certificate, but that's, that's your name. Number three, once a child believes that name, the child can then defend that name and say, no, you can't call me any other name. Do, we, do you understand that so far? Do you understand that so far? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sir. okay, question I've got for you. Verse 1 John 3, 1 to 2 says, God has called us a name called children of God, or each individual a child of God. And he says, beloved, now you are child of God. So what is the name that God has called you? In light of this text. What is the name that God has called you? In light of this text. Oh, you can't see. Should I bring another translation? Maybe it will help to see it. Let's see. Sons of God. Yeah, it's not. It's not a trick question, is it? Yeah. it's not a trick question, by the way. Yeah, sons. Is it sons of God. Yeah, sons of God. Right, that's the name. 
that's the name or you can say child of god right or you can say for collectively we are god's children right now we are god's children children of god we are counted as children of god so before god called you redeemed and saints and holy and righteous those are attributes that you have as part of your name. The name you have is God's baby. You are God's baby. You are God's child. Yeah, you are a child of God. That's who you are. That is that is your name. Now, why is this important? Let's go back to this text. Let's go back to this text. I want you to look at this text, uh, John chapter ten, John chapter ten verses uh, 33 to 36. Jesus said to them, my father has enabled me to do many good deeds. My father has enabled me to do many good deeds. I have shown many acts of mercy in your presence. For which of these do you mean to stone me? So he's talking to these Pharisees that wanted to stone Jesus. He was saying to them, I've done a lot of good works among you. Why do you want to stone me? And they said, they replied, they said, we are not going to stone you for the good work, but for blasphemy. What is the blasphemy? Because you are a mere man, you make yourself out to be God. Another translation they say is, you are a man, you call yourself a child of God. So the reason why Jesus Christ was actually crucified or well, the reason why they gave was because he claimed to be a child of God. And then he said to them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. That God said to every human being, you are gods. Why? Because we're made in the image and likeness of God. So in our said, men are called gods by the law. Men to whom God's message came. And the scripture cannot be set aside or cancelled or broken or annulled. If that is true, you say of the one whom the Father consecrated and dedicated and set apart for yourself and said, sent into the world, you are blasphemy because I said, I am the Son of God. So, why is it a big deal to have the name child of God? It's because, like father, like child, like parent, like child. Why is it such a big deal to be called a child of God? Because the moment you become a child of God, you are back in the God class. I'm not saying you are equal to God. I'm just saying you are in the God class. As a matter of fact, in the realm of the spirit, if you can see the realm of the spirit, the angels look at you and say, this one is of God. So you are of God. Why? Because you are a child of God. You are of God because God gave birth to you the moment you became born again. You became born again. You received Christ as Lord and Savior. You are of God. Therefore, if you are of God, everything that the Father has, you have. Everything that the Father has, you have. So the concept of knowing your new name, which is child of God, is that you then have this concept of inheritance and being an heir or an heiress of God, which means God wants you to carry this consciousness that says, I'm a child of God. So somebody says, I'm a child of God. And somebody now says to you, you are a servant of God. What should be your reaction? If God says, you are now a child of God, somebody calls, oh, you are a servant of God, what should be your response? I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you for helping me there. Now, what if somebody turns around and say, you are a sinner? What, what should you be your response? Was redeemed by the blood of God. Yeah, you say you now have a new name called what? Redeemed or saint. 
Now, let me now paint the que question back, right? Let's look at the question in a different way, yeah? So we're all, we're all okay so far. I'm a child of God. Somebody calls me servant of God. I say, no, hang on a minute, dude. That's not my name. The same way, the same way Josh will say, I'm not Joshua, I'm Josh. The same way Jane will say, no, don't call me John. John. <laughs> my name is Jane. Why are you calling me John? You, know, you got it wrong. It's the same way somebody, somebody says to you, um, you are a sinner or you are a servant. You say, no, that's not my name. God has called me his child. I'm now a child of God. I am of, I'm in the God class. I'm not a servant. I'm not a servant looking in. I have access to my father's throne. I'm not tolerated. If you have a servant in the house who is taking care of your children, you will not tell that servant where you put all your money. You know, like maybe you're, you're saving a big amount of money. You not, well, If you tell the servant where your money is, you will not probably not give that servant your pin number or to all your in inheritance. You won't, you won't do that. If you have a servant in your house who is taking care of your stuff, there are secrets that the servant will not know about. So every time somebody says, oh, I'm a servant of God, they, they paint this picture that you're a servant of God, it automatically creates barrier between you and God in your own mind, right? That you don't have access. But access, specifically is what we have. Why? Because the Bible says, we that were one time far off, we have not been delight, brought delightfully close by the blood of Jesus. Right? So, if somebody calls you a name, but different from the name that God has called you, you should challenge and say, no, that's not my name. Okay. Now, but what if you don't believe in that name? What if you don't believe in that name? What if you don't believe that you're a child of God? Or what if, if you believe a child of God in very firmly, maybe in your head, but you don't believe in your heart. What do you think your response would be? What do you think your response would be? You might try, you might accept that you're a servant and then you say, but I'm also a child. <laughs> okay, so you get confused. So you get yeah. confused. You can get confused, right? Yeah. If you accept that, if you accept, okay, I mean, I mean I'm a servant. Ah, oh, but here it says I'm a child. Oh, so who am I? You get confused. Yeah, you get confused. And when we're confused in our identity, we don't get much done. Not because God is holding anything back, it's just because we, we, we are confused. confused. Okay, right. When, when Adam called Eve, Eve, Do we see that as an act of faith or not? Do you see that as an act of faith or not? How could she be called a life giver if she's been deceived and all these issues on the ground? How could she be called a life giver? How could Adam be bold to call her a life giver? There has to be an act of faith because he hasn't given life yet. Fantastic. You are correct, 100%. It is an okay. act of faith. Adam demonstrated faith in the faithfulness of God. In, in fact, God has given a way out here. And, God, yeah, and because Adam saw a way out, Adam declared Eve to be life giver. And by the pronouncement of Adam on Eve, she definitely became a life giver. Throughout everybody, she said. But I would say after shortly, shortly after that, she, be, she gave birth to another a child, and the child gave birth to another one, and the, the stuff continues that way. All right. So the pronouncement of Adam was a prophetic declaration based on agreeing with what God has said. And what does that have? To, what does that have to do with us? What this means, therefore, is this: when God declares you, gives you a name, you must act in faith to call yourself what He calls you in order for you to experience it. I'll say that again. When God called you a name, this name will be written in the Bible about this is who you are now. This name you will hear it spoken over and over. When God calls you a name, 
you need to call yourself what God calls you. You need to declare that out of your mouth regularly in order for you to experience it. So um, I want us to do an exercise. I want to do an exercise. So Nick, if you go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, let's do an exercise. And then I possibly will do a break conversation for five minutes. Right. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Let's take another name. Remember, the, the principle is this. God calls you a name. By virtue of your birth, God starts to give you different names. Whatever name God has called you, in order for that name to be experiential in your life, you need to say it out of your mouth. You need to call yourself what God calls you. That's what it means to work with God. To, to work with God, you must agree with God. To agree with God, you must say what God says in every situation. Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. 21. Are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, if you can just read for us. Which version are you reading? NLT, yeah? NLT, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, that's what you have. Okay. All right, let's go. Continue. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So what did we get from here? What did we get from here? What is God telling us that we are here? We have been... Jesus paid the price for us. He became the offering for our sin. Yeah, so that, why is that? So that? So that we, we are no longer sinners. Yeah, um, now what are we? Children of God. Okay, but in this one says, gives another name. We are made, been made right with, with God. God. So somebody says to you, you are not right with God. You just lost favor with God now. You, you just did what? You know, I just told you, Jay, you just lost favor with God now. Huh. <laughs> you you that. That. <laughs> yeah, if somebody were to tell you that, mm. that, is, that is contradicting the fact that you have been made right with God, isn't it? Yeah. That's essentially somebody say, oh, God is angry with you now. Or the wrath of God is upon your life now. Somebody is saying those things to you. Mm. Those words contradict what this is telling us. Now, remember, yeah. remember Adam. Adam, in the, the worst thing that's ever happened in the world was what happened in that garden. I want to really call that out. Adam, the worst thing that's ever happened to the history of the world, ever, was what happened in that garden when the devil tricked, tricked the woman and God came in there and God began to give judgment and all that. That's the worst thing. Nothing worse could ever have happened than what happened in that garden. But Adam showed us a way to relate to God in the middle of whatever it's happened. When God has come through in there and said, God gave hope, God by grace declared, I'm going to fix this. And God made a, made a prophetic declaration. And Adam showed us that the way to agree with God, the way to make the grace of God, whatever God has declared to work for us, is to say in faith, just like Lorena said that, to declare by faith, what God has said, I say, I agree with it. And this step is an act of faith. Your body will reject it. Your body will say, well, how can you say you're, you're righteous? How can you say you're that? But that is what God has said. And the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. The only way to relate to God is by faith. It's not by uh, logic. It's not by reasoning. It's not by how you feel. Is by faith. If God has said this is who you are, and God has said this is your new name now, child of God, that is what you should say back. Every time you say that back, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I belong in the house. I'm a child of God. I'm loved by God. God has given me a new name. My name is righteous. My name is holy. My name is blameless. My name is faultless. My name is a saint. Hallelujah. All right. So let's take five minutes breakout session. What I want you to do, I'm going to break it into, let's see how many we can break it into. We've not done breakout session in a while, so I'm just going to do that. And what we want you to do is just spend five minutes in your group to talk about a name that God has called you, that you remember, right? Just, just talk about 
okay and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes let's see whether we can do breakout rooms okay how many are we here let's just say five so it's in five minutes we're back at 23 or 24 okay The instruction is just one name that you think God has called you and then talk about it. I'll meet, I'm going to stop recording for a while. All right, who wants to go in, in, the, in each room? Who wants to go first? Nika? God's favorite daughter, why are you doing this now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. So, God's favorite daughter, so if somebody tells you now that um, you have to fight and work for the favor of God, then how do you then, how do you then respond to that? I'm already his favorite. <laughs> his favorite. People are going help you understand what this test is what this assignment is helping us to do is I know it's, it's easy to start to say maybe God's no longer favoring me let me not do one do something to earn it is that is what you know, ask you to do mm -hmm. right or God has already favored you amen God has already in fact in the passion translation it says it says it's love cascades over us and the image that God gave me there was like if you stay under a waterfall, you under a waterfall, you just have this this water pouring over you. That is your default position. You understand? Mm -hmm. And and it, it takes faith. Honestly, it takes faith to just especially when things especially when things are not looking well. That's when you then will start to say, oh, maybe God has left you. God has abandoned you. You're no longer God's favorite child. But God is in love with you. God loves you. You know, and God God favors you. And it has nothing to do with what you've done. It's really because you are in Christ. God favors you, right? Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Who wants to go next? We're righteous children of God. Okay. We're righteous children of God. All right. And this is based on that second Corinthians, second Corinthians 5 21, right? At the very yes. Yeah. Now, when you do something that is not so okay, yeah, <laughs> what do you? How does this? The same way, Josh. Josh would say, "My name is not Joshua. My name is Josh." Does he stop bearing Josh even when when he behaves nasty? No. Do this is this Josh? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Okay, so when 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 we find ourselves doing things that we I shouldn't have done that, do you then say oh, I'm no longer righteous? No, I still did that today. Hey, fantastic! Now, but you will feel funny because you're thinking, but that's not. That's not yeah, of course it would it, because I was while I was driving, I was cussing at someone that was cutting in front of me, <laughs> and and I just oh, so I'm sorry that. <laughs> Yeah, like, you, you, you hold yourself as I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you don't course, know, there's immediately you, you you begin to feel that, like, oh no, I shouldn't have said that. Yes. You know. I shouldn't have said that I'm a child of God. I'm really I could have said that. Yeah, yeah, but you don't go back and say, I'm no longer righteous. No. All right. All right. Okay, thank you so much. Who else is going next? So we have room five. We have room one. So I've got room two and uh, room two and room four. I think you have not spoken. Who is, who is, who is speaking in room two? Uh, which room two? I don't even know my room number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, we are the redeemed of the Lord. We're above reproach. We're the apple of his eye. We are his precious children. We are loved, protected, healed, delivered, saved, rescued, and all of the good stuff. 
Okay. And which of which of which of these names do you struggle with? Struggle, struggle to accept. Well, now I, I don't struggle to accept any of those names, really. Okay. Okay. But in the early days, you struggle with some of them. All of them, yes. <laughs> you struggle. That's not like that possible. Right. All of them. I didn't believe anything. <laughs> I want to you, but I can I be righteous? I can I be holy? I can... <laughs> right, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's really hard. Yeah, that. really hard. All right, yeah. thank you for sharing that. All right, room four, Ruthie TT talks. Which one of you is representing the team? Oh, have, have I lost my team people here? No, I can see Teddy here. I can chill. I can see. Hello, I'm here. So who's representing us? Okay, I'll speak. Um, we talked about peace, which is what um peaceful, which is what uh Titi identifies as what God calls her, and then Ruthie was um. I think it was promised or his promises. Ruthie, did, what was it again? Sorry. Um, it was blessed. Don't worry. Bless, it was blessing. Okay. And then you <laughs> talked about being in the ark and, and being assured of his promises. Yeah. And for me, it was um, beloved. Mm. 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 So which of these names do you think is a challenge at times? I think we actually focused on the ones that we were com we knew for a fact that that's who we were. That's good. That's good. As opposed as opposed to, you know, what the Bible says It's just what through our personal walk with God, what we believe that God has called us. Okay, all right, fantastic. I want us to do an assignment, and then please don't forget the assignment. Yeah. I want you to find an this week. You want us to do what? I want you to find another word, another name this week. Yeah, it might be justified, it might be uh, affected, it might be whatever. You know, there are a number of them in there. Um, I want you to um, focus on that. Just play on that. You know. So remember the way we the way, the way we know our names is by repetition. When somebody calls it, so by repetition. Uh, by seeing it, we see it written in the book and then we'll repeat it over and over. Then we'll believe it, right? And then we can defend it, okay? So what I wanted to do this week is find a name, right? Find a name in the, in the word. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna post a link to my, my book here. You can, you can basically download it um, if you're looking for inspiration. Uh, you can download this and then put it, posting it here. For those of you, if you go to that place, to that website, you can download it. Um, and then once you download it, pick, if in case you can't find a name, you can go in there. I've got about 30 of them in there. You just pick one of them, on down it, read it over, over, say it out loud over and over. And you might want to write down how you feel doing it throughout the week. And then when we come back next week, I would like to just do a round through just to see how that works for you. So, Titi, you raise up your hands. Yeah, I raised up my hand because you know you're asking, so which one do we struggle with? Yes. My one that I do struggle with sometimes, not all the time, is righteous. <laughs> no matter how many times I think about it, right, righteous through Christ, some days I just sit and I think, hmm, really? It, I just still struggle with that whole... It's not that I don't believe it, I do but I do struggle with that. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I think let's do this exercise next week because one of the, one of the, one of the things I want to do is try and help to um, embrace that identity because everything flows from identity. Everything literally flows from identity. So next week, what we're going to do is, so, so you know, you know that um, I'll probably will also share something about the way the mind works. You know, I'll, I'll put that in the notes so that I can, I can do that. So I think once you understand the way the mind works, you understand that you then understand how, the reason why you're struggling because um, 
that belief, even though you believe it, it has not become a deep-seated belief, as it were. You know, the same way you say, my name is Titi. Someone say, your name is no longer Titi. You just say, what do you mean? My name is, <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. You know, because you know, and you know, and you know, and you know, right? Okay. So this spiritual realities requires, uh, require processing, like repetition, you know? Yeah. So that's the way Abraham was able to become Abraham was through repetition. When he started calling himself, I'm Abraham, I'm Abraham, I'm Abraham. Everybody around him began to hear, uh, this guy is father of many nations, father of many nations. And that's how that transpired, right? So I think we're going to definitely pick that up. You know, it's an action point to, if you, you might want to, why don't you just pick that one as, as for teaching, for example, as one that you focus on for this, um, for this week, just read it, read it, um, say it out loud, really say it out loud. And then next week we can, we'll try and practice. I'll kind of show you some, some ways in which you can embellish some of this identity stuff in our heart. Yeah. Okay. So I got one. I yeah. just remembered. <laughs> So the one that I was struggling with up until last week was was healed, the word healed. So um, since um, late 2021, I had this chest pain. And you know, if you've been, <laughs> if you've been watching, following the COVID-19 news, blah, 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 I took the vaccine. So um, around December, I just started having this chest pain that I was supposed to go to the hospital for, but I hate hospitals, so I didn't go. But the, the, the pain just kept, you know, heightening, heightening, heightening. So I, I braved it up and went to the hospital this year. So I went to the hospital. If I told Pastor Davis, uh, but I did tell Pastor Davis that <laughs> I was afraid that the source of the chest pain, the heart, whatever, the head, the ill, the disease, the problem, the health scare was, you know, my fear of COVID, the vaccine that I took. So I went and then the doctor said that there was nothing really serious, uh, you know, but even after I went to the hospital, I kept going, I kept going because I had a series of tests and they were like, it's not that serious, it's not that serious. In fact, the last doctor told me just, cut down caffeine, no, and he was telling me what to eat and what not to eat. I came home and I was still feeling the pain. The chest pain was there, but I didn't want to tell anybody. In fact, this was supposed to be my testimony <laughs> today. I forgot. So it's just, it's just coming back to me. Now, um, I was just talking randomly with one of my friends and she just texted, be healed in Jesus' name. I wish she said be healed. There was so much, it was a text message, but I could sense the authority in the message that she typed. And I was just saying, amen, 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 amen. You won't believe it, or rather, you should believe me. <laughs> but instantly, the chest pain just disappeared. Guess what I did the next morning? I woke up the next morning, and I was looking for the chest pain. Like, I was doing all the things I would do where I would feel the chest, the chest pain and all of that. I kept doing it for three days, waking up looking for the chest pain, because I couldn't believe that something I had had since late 2021 up until this year was still there. Then the Holy Spirit just told me, why are you looking for something in a home that is no longer there? And he was not, he not took me back to the tomb he said the tomb is empty jesus is no longer in the tomb if you go back to the tomb looking for jesus you're going to be finding an empty tomb it's the same thing that happened to my body if i keep looking for this chest pain or whatever i'm not going to find it that's when it clicked in my head that i was completely healed like that that was my aha moment with it so now um i would say that I, i'm not completely there yet but i'm much better than the struggle I was having with the word healed. That's what I wanted to share. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, yeah, I think we, we ran out of time, but thank you for sharing that uh, testimony. And I believe that's also helpful for somebody who might be needing complete healing. Remember that that healing is already yours. Um, we are to lay hold what's on what is already ours, right? So um, God will help all of us as we go through this process is because it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Once we believe it, and it works for us. So, but it comes to repetition, repetition, and keep looking at it. You have to say it over and over and over for your heart to believe it. Thank you so much, Tamar, for sharing that. All right. Um, I'm sorry that I took um, 11 minutes over, over the time. Apologies. Um, is there any last minute comment before we go? Okay. So, the exercise that we're taking away, because we haven't done exercise in a long time, right? Is you got a link to that. Uh, you can download the book there if you want. Um, take one identity or one name that God has called you. Um, and just that, especially the one that you struggle with, you know, and just ponder it, talk about it, ponder it, talk about it. You might want to write it out and put it on a post-it note, whatever, just remind yourself over and over and over and over. And then let's talk about how we, your experience um, at, at this time next week. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight.
thank you for your opportunity, the opportunity you've given us to understand the power of this new name that we have in Christ. Father, we are children of God. And because we are your children, we have access, absolutely access to everything that you have. So therefore, Lord, as we leave here, help us to remember this, to remember that it is already done, that we are recipients of your grace, of what you have done, and that we receive by faith. Thank you all, mighty God, for your faithfulness. As we leave here, oh Lord, help us, teach us, guide us, uphold us, strengthen us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please, for those, before you go, um, Pastor Patrick is starting the physical church in Meeting Kings on um, this Sunday um, by 11 o'clock. So it's going to be a physical church going running now from uh, every Sunday by 11 o'clock in the morning. So if you're around Meeting Kings area, if you live, live there, you know somebody there, uh, please do share. I'm going to post this stuff in the group, in the WhatsApp group, please share with them so that they can be part of that local church if they if they are led to 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 go there. But uh I'll be there, I'll be there on Sunday after church. After our own church, I'll be I'll be heading there to pray with him and uh, celebrate with them. Right. So just FY. Okay. Right. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm Lord. Jolly, Jolly, and all the day of our lives, and we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. You're blessed. Amen. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a nice week.